بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى يسيز يا أيها الناس قد جاءتكم موعظة من ربكم وشفاء لما في الصدور وهدى ورحمة للمؤمنين O mankind that has come to you an admonishment or a reminder from your Lord which is also a shifa, a cure for what is in the hearts. Wahudan, and it is a guidance, and it is a mercy for the believers. So this Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent, it has a number of descriptions mentioned in the Quran itself. And the Quran itself describes the Quran with a number of uh, attributes and characteristics. And we mention some of these descriptions in our Usul al-Tafsir course. But just one of these that I wanted to focus on is the fact that the Qur'an is a guidance. It is a guidance for myself, for all of you, for your families, for everybody from the time of its revelation until the Qur'an will be uh, taken. And that's why Hassan Basri, he says regarding the Qur'an that the Salaf used to see the Qur'an as letters from their Lord, a letter directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would ponder over it during the night and they would act upon it during the day. And this Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another place, He says, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ That it is a revelation from the Lord of all worlds. نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ That Jibreel alayhi salam came down with. عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِذِرِينَ Upon your heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that you can warn the people. بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيٍّ مُبِينٍ And it was revealed in the clear Arabic language. So you can see how one of the descriptions of the Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions regarding it is that it was revealed in the Arabic language. And then Allah, He mentioned this clearly. It's not something that we've just said, okay, the Qur'an is in Arabic. Allah Himself mentions it, that it is in Arabic. And in the beginning of Surah Yusuf, inna anzalnahu Qur'anan Arabiya la'allakum ta'aqilun. That we have sent down the Arabic Qur'an so that you can ponder over it and you can understand it. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he comments on this ayah, ayah number two in Surah Yusuf. And he says, uh, regarding the ayah, he says, the Arabic language is the most eloquent, clear, deep, and expressive of the meanings of the Qur'an. Therefore, the most honorable book was sent and revealed in the most honorable language through the most honorable angel to the most honorable prophet and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi in the most honorable time, late al-Qadr in Ramadan, and in the most honorable place, Mecca. فَكَمُولَ مِنْ كُلِّ الْوُجُوهِ So the Qur'an is perfect in all aspects. But we have to ask ourselves, that why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose the, Arab, to choose the Qur'an to be revealed in Arabic? And not only, you know, not only is it that because the Prophet spoke Arabic, but why did Allah choose it? Why, and why has Allah mentioned in the Qur'an that the Qur'an is in Arabic? And everyone can see it's in Arabic. It's clear, right? But why has Allah mentioned it that it's in Arabic? Because in there is an indication to the fact that you can't truly understand the Quran and this message and this guidance that has come to you except if you know the Arabic language. So in today's little reminder, inshallah, I want to mention just to further emphasize the importance of the Arabic language, I want to mention 10 benefits of the Arabic language. The first benefit of the Arabic language is like what we just mentioned, you understand the Quran. And if that was enough of a benefit, then khlas, you know, that, that's more than enough. The fact that we can understand the guidance and the letter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to us. And just imagine if you can understand the Quran, you know, how much would your iman increase even more? When you are praying tarawih behind the imam, how much more khushu' would you have in salah? You know, I have some Arabic students, 
they're not yeah, they're not reached a lot of a high level. They've maybe studied Medina Book One, Medina Book Two for like a year with me, for example. And then Ramadan came along, and after that, I got I got messages from them saying that this Ramadan was my best Ramadan because I understood not everything, but I could you know work out what was uh, being said and increase me in my khushur so much more in, uh, in the salah. So un- understanding of the Quran is very important. The second benefit is just like you understand the Quran, you understand the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi. Uh, you know, many a time when we take rulings from uh, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, a lot of the time it's dependent upon the Arabic language. And if you don't know the Arabic language, the small differences will make a difference in the ruling that you take. Um, for example, there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, Zakatu al Janini, Zakatu Ummihi. That you know the fetus or the child which is in the belly of the of the animal. Now there's there's two animals. There's the there's the mother and the child. So when you sacrifice the animal, do you do you do one or do you do two? Like one for the mother or do you have to do two, two? One for the mother and for the child. Anyways, what's the there's a difference of opinion. Uh, the Maliki, Shafi'i, Hanabila take one opinion. The Hanifi take one opinion. Why? They both use the same hadith. They both use the exact same hadith. No one's going against hadith. They'd be using the same hadith. What's the difference? One narration is zakatul janini zakatu ummihi and the other one is zakatul janini zakata ummihi. That's the only difference. Zakatu and zakata. One means the uh, sacrifice of the fetus is like the sacrifice of the mother, meaning just like you do the mother, you do the, 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 the child. And the other is the sacrifice of the fetus is the sacrifice of the mother. In English, you have to choose one of the two. But in Arabic, has both meaning as a dad, depending on which uh, uh, which haraka you take. And likewise, Al Asma'i rahimahullah passed away two one six. He said, and this what he said is and he, it's really profound. He says, "I fear the one who makes a mistake in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He will come under the hadith man kazaba alayhi mutaamidan falyatbawa maqadhu min al-nar. Whoever lies about me intentionally, then let him take his seat in the hellfire." And if you say the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالَ بِالنِّيَاتِ The Prophet ﷺ didn't say that. He said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالَ لُّهُ بِالنِّيَاتِ So you lied about the Prophet ﷺ. Obviously, if somebody does it without knowing, inshallah they're forgiven. But the fact that he even said this. So the second benefit of the Arabic language is that you understand the, uh, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The third benefit is basically a outcome of the first two. If you understand the Qur'an and you understand the Sunnah, then you understand the, the religion. So the third benefit of Arabic language is that you understand the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something which, without mentioning quotes or anything, just look at the students that know Arabic language and the students that don't know Arabic language. Majority of the time, you can clearly tell, the one who knows Arabic language is a much stronger student of knowledge than the one who does not know. The Arabic language. And that's clear, you know, just by meeting people, you can tell. The one who knows the Arabic language, generally, you can see that he has a stronger understanding and a better understanding of his religion than the one who does not know the Arabic language. And from there, there's many statements of uh, the ulama, rahimahumullah. Umar radiallahu an, he says, uh, العربيه فإنها من دينكم. That learn the Arabic language because it's from your religion. Learn the, uh, Umar radiallahu an, he's commanding us. Learn the Arabic language because it's from your uh, religion. And likewise, many of the ulama also have statements. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said, It is obligatory upon every Muslim to learn the Arabic language, what allows him to make effort in fulfilling his obligations. And I mean, there's so many other statements, I don't want to mention too many uh, statements, I want to keep it short, inshallah. But to truly understand the language, it's only through the Arabic language. If you want to specialize in Aqidah, you think you know Aqidah properly, and you don't know the Arabic language, you do not know Aqidah properly. And you can have some Aqidah, but I'm talking about to get to a very high level. Because Aqidah is based upon what? The Qur'an and Sunnah. And without the Arabic language, you can't correctly derive those rulings from the Qur'an and Sunnah. Same goes with Fiqh, such as the example I gave before. Such as any other science. You can be Ahl Hadith and specialize in Hadith. Hadith is not in Urdu or in English. It's in Arabic. For, so for you to even specialize in any other science, you can't specialize without knowing the Arabic language. So that's the third benefit. Uh, 
The fourth benefit is that it protects a person from making major mistakes. It protects a person from making major mistakes. One of the reasons they say that the Arabic language, the rulings of the Arabic language were even, was even written was because of this. In the time of the Sahaba, عنهم, there wasn't a book that they would study. There wasn't a science called Nahu or Sarf or Balagha or whatever it may be. They spoke it naturally. But after Islam spread and non-Arabs started to enter into the religion, there's a, you know, there's a couple of stories that I mentioned. One of them is that a Bedouin came and this is in the time of Ali radiallahu an. And he came to the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah uh, Tawbah. وَذَانُوا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لَنَاسِ يَوْمَ الْحَجِّ الْأَكْبَرِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ بَرِيءٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَرَسُولُهُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ Verily Allah is free from those who commit shirk وَرَسُولُهُ And His Messenger is also free from them. Or in other words, Allah and His Messenger are free from the mushrikeen. That's the meaning of the ayah. أَنَّ اللَّهَ بَرِيءٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَرَسُولُهُ A Bedouin came, uh, not a Bedouin, an Arab he came and he read, أَنَّ اللَّهَ بَرِيءٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَرَسُولِهِ Instead of وَرَسُولُهُ وَرَسُولِهِ He recited. How does, how does that change the meaning? It changes the meaning from Allah and His Messenger are free from the mushrikeen to Allah is free from the mushrikeen and the Prophet ﷺ. That's kufr. Why did this, meet, this, this sentence change from being a sentence of tawheed to a sentence of kufr? How? Arabic language. Person didn't know the Arabic language and look at the mistakes he is, he's making. And subhanAllah, just a few months ago, there was a janazah and, uh, in, in UK. And one of the family members, they wanted one of the younger kids who, who memorized Quran to lead salah. Okay? And uh, it was a woman who, uh, sorry, it was, a, it was a man who passed away. So he's making dua, Allahumma kfirullaha wa rahamha wa af. Oh Allah, forgive her. And it's a man. You understand? So look, in, in Salah, imagine somebody passed away, they had Janazah Salah, and the Imam's reciting, and he's, he's saying her instead of him. Inshallah, he's forgiven, he doesn't know, but this is something that I don't think any of us would want that, right? So to save ourselves from these mistakes, we have to learn the Arabic language. The fifth benefit of the Arabic language is that it protects a person from falling into innovations as well. It protects a person from falling into innovations. So not just mistakes, but actual uh, bid'ah, innovations. There's a story of um, uh, Abu Amr al-Basri, rahimahullah. Abu Amr al-Basri, he's one of the imams of the sunnah and the Arabic language and qira'at. The qira'at which are sat in the salah was Abu Amr. So a mu'tazili, he came to him. And uh, he said to Abu Amr, that I have found an ayah in the Qur'an which proves what I believe is correct. The Mu'tazila believe any person who commits a major sin is in hellfire forever. Whereas Ahl Sunnah believe, no, that's not the case. If somebody commits a major sin, then he's under the will of Allah. If Allah wants to forgive him, he can forgive him. If Allah wants to punish him, Allah can uh, punish him. So he came to Abu Amr al-Basri and he said, I found an ayah which proves my madhab or my opinion is correct. So Abu Amr said, he knows the Qur'an and he's thinking, which ayah is he talking about? There's no ayah. So he said, okay, mention the ayah. And he said, the ayah is, وَلَنْ يُخْلِفَ اللَّهُ وَعْدَهُ Allah will not go against his wa'ad. He understood the word wa'ad to mean wa'id. Wa'id means punishment. He understood the ayah to mean, if Allah mentions a punishment, Allah will never go against it and this person will be punished forever. That's how he understood the ayah. So if you commit a sin, you'll be punished forever. But the ayah is not وَلَنْ يُخْلِفَ اللَّهُ وَعِيدَهُ The ayah is وَلَنْ يُخْلِفَ اللَّهُ وَعَدَهُ Allah will not go against his promise. And the rewards. Not talking about punishment. So Abu Amr said to him, الْوَعَدْ غَيْرَ الْوَعِيدِ Wa'id is something, one thing and wa'id is something else. And if you make, a, and he said the Arabs, if they made a promise, it was praiseworthy to keep that promise. And if they promised to punish you, it was praiseworthy for them to forgive you. And then he mentioned some lines of poetry to prove this point and so on. And then he also said, Min al-ujmati utit. And you've made this mistake, why? Because you're non-Arab. You don't know the Arabic language. So you can see this whole madhab from being from Ahl Sunnah to going into 
uh, being from the Mu'tazila, was one ayah. He didn't understand it correctly due to not knowing the Arabic uh, language. And many of the ulama, rahimahullah, have mentioned similar things. Hassan al-Basri said, when he was talking about Ahl al-Bid'ah, verily al-Ujma, meaning being a non-Arab, caused them to be destroyed. What caused them to go astray? Arabic language. <coughs> And even now, you know, Ahl al-Bid'ah, some of them in the Madaris, you know, you see that they memorized in you know, the Ghardan, the uh, Fa'ala, Fa'ala, Fa'alu, Fa'ala, Fa'ala, all of them, right? And they seem that they know Arabic language. The reality is they don't know. The Salaf, you know, Ahmad and their likes, they were Imams, not only in the Sunnah, in Arabic language as well. The Ahl al-Bid'ah would come to them, and they would refute them from the Arabic language. Uh, one example is seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we believe that, Ahl Sunnah believe that we see Allah subhanahu, uh, we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah. Right? Um, ya Shaykh al-Islam, he says in Wasatiya, Al-Imanu bi anna al-Mu'mineen yarawnahu yawm al-Qiyamati a'yanan bi absarihim. That we believe that the believers will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their eyes on the Day of Judgment and so on. And there's many hadith, and there's many ayat. Okay? There's um, the ayah, وَلِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةِ Those that are ihsan will have paradise, and an extra reward, the Prophet ﷺ explained the extra reward is seeing Allah. And likewise, many of the ayat, likewise, a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna kun rabbakum, verily you see your Lord, kama taroon al qamar later badri la yudamun fi ru'yati. Just as you see the full moon on that night where there's no clouds, as clearly as you can see that moon, that's how clear you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point being is the ayat and the hadith are many. <coughs> so Sahal al will come and they'll, they'll come to the story of Musa ﷺ. Allah says, وَلَمَّا جَاءَ مُوسَىٰ لِمِقَاتِنَا وَكَلَّمَهُ رَبُّهُ When Musa alayhi salam, he came and he had a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he had a direct conversation with Allah. After having this direct conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after hearing Allah, Musa alayhi salam wanted the next level. He said, قَالَ رَبِّ أَرِينِي أَنْظُرْ إِلَيْكَ Allow me to look at you, O Allah. What was Allah's reply? Allah said, قَالَ لَنْ تَرَانِي You will not be able to see me. وَلَكِنْ أُنظُرْ لِلْ جَبَلْ فَلِنْسْتَقَرَّ مَكَانَهُ فَسَوْ فَتَرَانِي But look at that mountain over there and then you will see me and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Mufassirun mentioned Allah showed a fingertips amount of himself to the mountain and the mountain crumbled. And when Musa alayhi salam saw that mountain crumble he also fainted. وَخَرَّ مُوسَى صَعِقَ Musa fainted. فَلَمَّا أَفَاقَ قَالَ سُبَحَانَكَ تُبُتُ إِلَيْكَ وَأَنَا أَوَّلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ now this story has many fawaid uh, and so on and I think the last time when I came I gave a khutbah on this, on this ayah but I want, the, po- the point which I want is this wording here قَالَ لَنْ تَرَانْ You will not see me Ahlul Bid'ah will come along and they will say look لَنْ لَنْ negate something in the future لَنْ negate something in the future and Allah says you will not see me that means you will never see Allah person doesn't know the Arabic language they say oh you know what he's right oh. but the ulama of the salaf they give, they've given answers he said this lan is the nafi al qarib in the close future. Meaning in this dunya we not, you will not see Allah. But in the akhirah, in the further away future, you, you can see Allah. And what's the proof? All of the ayat, the hadith that I mentioned, and so on. But you can see they made this mistake. Why? Not truly understanding the Arabic language. So this was which point? No, point number five? That was, that was point number five. Uh, that it causes a person to fall into innovations. Um, number six is similar to what we mentioned previously, but it is the key for a student of knowledge. The sixth benefit of the Arabic language is that it is the key for the student of knowledge. What do you mean by key? Yani, through this Arabic language, it opens so many doors for you. You understand the religion so much better. Because then I, I mentioned to you how all of, the, uh, all of the sciences are linked and they can only truly be understood through the Arabic language. Likewise, the books are in which language? The Quran is in Arabic, the Hadith is in Arabic. Right, the explanations are in which language? Arabic. English is very, very little. Okay? And even, يعني, even the ones that are, that are translated, because many of them are not translated correctly. Or if they are translated correctly, it's in Shakespeare uh, English. No one, even I don't understand. Right? But the true knowledge is in Arabic. So, and also the lessons of the ulama, 
the lessons of the ulama are in which language? In the Arabic language. So if a person truly wants to understand the religion, he has to take this key, which is the key of Arabic language. The seventh benefit is a bit of a longer one, but this is one statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah And he mentions the Arabic language, it increases a person in his, in his intellect. It increases a person in his intellect, in his morals, in his morals, and his religion. And his uh, religion. And then he also says, and it also has an effect on a person by resembling the earlier companions and their followers. It also is a cause for a person to emulate the companions and the students, uh, i.e. the Salaf. And Shaykh Hassan mentions all of this uh, in, uh, in, one, uh, in one place. And imagine, even this by itself is enough. If Arabic language increases you in your religion, it increases you in your morals and your manners and your characteristics, and also in your intellect, and when you know the Arabic language, a lot of other things also become clearer, the way you think and so on. And it allows you to follow the footsteps of the companions. Because what more does a person want? But is that the same in the English language? No. And a lot of the time, you know, if a person doesn't know the Arabic language, when I keep saying it's not like that in the English language, the person who doesn't know Arabic doesn't really understand what I'm saying. He doesn't really truly appreciate what I'm saying. But the one who does know the Arabic language, he'll agree fully. I'm sure. Sheikh. Sheikh will agree. But the, the ones that don't know Arabic, when I keep saying right, it's not the case in English, honestly, the truth is you won't truly understand the point which I'm making. It's only once you know the Arabic language and you experience it and you learn and you read, you can understand these differences that I am uh, referring to. The eighth benefit, and this is more of a general benefit, is you can communicate with more Muslims. You can communicate with more Muslims. And if you travel the world, khas, how many people are that speak uh, Arabic? And the, the main people that you want to speak to are the ulama. But also in other places as well. Uh, and if you want to speak to people in high uh, authority, then you can't be speaking street Arabic. You have to be speaking at a higher level um, Arabic. So even in terms of your dunya, there's benefit from the Arabic language uh, as well. The ninth benefit is... It's a means of gaining reward. It is a means of gaining reward. How? Because it's, it's talib al-ilm, seeking knowledge. So it will come on the, just like you said, Quran, Hadith, Aqeedah, Tafsir, khas, Arabic is also a part of uh, the, the, the religion. So you get rewarded for it. So it's not only getting all of those benefits, you will be rewarded for learning um, the Arabic language. And the tenth benefit is that it aids a person in memorizing the Qur'an. It aids a person in memorizing the Qur'an and also other supplications, ad'iyah and so on. And if, if you understand, if, let's say there's a story being mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then khlas, if you know the meaning, it makes sense and you can follow and you're not going to get confused with, with ayat and so on. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the believers at the end, you're going to know أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And you're not going to say مُجْرِمُون for example, criminals. You know from the, uh, from the meaning. And likewise, if you're memorizing du'as, right, if you're making ad'iyah, then if you understand what they mean, then that increases you in your khushu' in those ad'iyah, and it's easier to learn more. And you know that what you're asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of the time people ask, oh, in sujood, can I make du'a in English? Can I do this? And you know, and so on. Why? Why even? You know, whether it's permissible or not, it's a different issue. Why not learn the adiyah that the Prophet sallallahu told us and understand them? And the Prophet was given jawami al kalim, comprehensive speech. He would say two words, and the meaning would be so much. Inna al a'mal bin niyat. Imam Shafi'i said it enters into seventy different chapters of fiqh. You know, three words, seventy different chapters of fiqh it comes under. So, alhamdulillah, these were. 10 benefits of uh, learning the Arabic language which show the importance of learning um, the Arabic language and the main one is you know the first few that I mentioned they understand the Quran and the Sunnah and your religion uh, generally a person who does not know the Arabic language then he's deficient in, in his religion and his understanding 
of the religion. Yes, you can have a general understanding, especially that which is obligatory upon you. But if you want to truly understand the religion, if you want to enjoy learning the religion, you want to appreciate the beauty of the religion, and you want to enjoy your salah behind the uh, imams and so on, that true contentment that you'll find tranquility in your heart will be through the Arabic language. And alhamdulillah, the miracle of the Qur'an, even if you don't understand, there's reward in reciting, and it can have an effect on a person. But that true impact will only be in, will be in the Arabic language. So uh, these were, were 10 points regarding learning the Arabic language. And inshallah, next time when I come back, inshallah, everyone should have a good level of Arabic language, inshallah. And the next reminder will be in Arabic, inshallah. Inshallah. Zakala khair. Subhanakallahumma alhamdulillah, ilaha illa 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 illa